I've been up all night dreaming of you till the morning light. Tell me what to do. Hotwaf is no stranger to making phones with a killer specs to price ratio. And the new Hotwaf Note 12 is no different. This thing is packed with some pretty recent tech, some of which you only find in much pricier phones. It could very well be the best budget phone of the year. And it's definitely got a good shot at being the best value in the entire Hotwaf lineup. <laughs> In this video I'm going to show you everything you want to know about the latest Note 12 from Hotwaf. I'm going to put it through its paces to see how it performs in a variety of tasks, including gaming, browsing the web, battery efficiency and taking photos. I'll also share my personal experiences using the phone and give you my overall thoughts on it and will try to answer the question. Is this a good phone for the price? Alright, let's open this bad boy and see what we got. Inside the box we have a screen protector and a dedicated vinyl transparent case. The phone itself which looks pretty cool with its triple camera island and the orange body. I like that. The usual stuff, a user manual, a 15 watts fast charger and a USB-C cable and an injector too. And that's everything you need to get started, but let's dive in and take a closer look. So the Note 12 has a pretty sweet design. The back of the phone is made of plastic with a leather-like texture that gives it a modern kind of look and feel. And it's also grippy so the phone doesn't feel slippery in the hand. The front of the phone is dominated by a 6.8 inch display with a 93% screen to body ratio. The bezels are thin except for the chin which is a bit thicker. The display has a resolution of 720 by 1600 pixels and a 60Hz refresh rate. Ok, it's a pretty solid standard for the budget phone. The only downside to the screen that is not full HD resolution and also the phone only supports Widevine L3 certification and that means you can only stream and watch standard definition content from supported streaming services like Netflix, Google or even YouTube. But hey, let's not forget it's a budget phone, can't expect everything, right? The colors are popping and the viewing angles are fine, it's also bright enough to use outdoors in the sunlight. The phone has a side mounted fingerprint sensor that's pretty responsive. The volume rockers are on the right side of the phone so these are well placed and easy to reach, while the left side houses the dual SIM tray and micro SD card slot. The bottom of the phone has a headphone jack, microphone and USB-C ports to plug the charger. At the top of the display there's a water drop notch that houses a selfie camera and just above that there's a headphone speaker that also works as a second loudspeaker. The dual speakers on this phone are banging, they produce clear heights and mids and they're almost loud enough to fill a room. Overall the design and build of the Hardwaf Note 12 are pretty solid for the budget phone. It feels sturdy and well made and it looks pretty good too. The phone is also fairly lightweight, coming in at just 198 grams and comes in two colours, black and orange. The IP68 dustproof and splashproof rating is a nice bonus too. At the back we got a dual lens rear camera system with a 48 megapixel main sensor and 2 megapixel macro sensor. I was skeptical about the cameras at first, but my wife took some photos with it and they turned out pretty solid. Let's take a look. And before we carry on, make sure you're subscribed. The main sensor takes sharp and detailed photos in bright daylight and it does ok in medium conditions, but the quality does degrade in the low light even with the help of Google image processing. So here's how the Hotwaf camera compares to all their budget phones, the latest Yule phone, Humidity and Blackview. Yule phone and Humidity definitely take the best photos, Hotwaf and Blackview are slightly behind. I have reviewed the Yule phone Note 16 Pro a few weeks ago so you can check it out too and together with my wife we'll prepare the other budget phones too so stay tuned. Well, let's take a closer look at how the zoom behaves. As you can see the more we zoom the more degraded the quality is, despite the heavy processing. So my advice is don't overuse the digital zoom. This phone can shoot 1080 pixels video at 30 frames per second which is pretty standard for a budget phone. 
All right, let's compare the unedited video quality of the Hotwap Note 12 to the Humidity G3 Plus on the iPhone 11. Both the Hotwap and Humidity apply a lot of image sharpening to their footage, which makes the video look kind of detailed but often makes it look unnatural. Additionally, the Hotwap sometimes loses its focus and we get kind of blurry footage. I know it's not fair to compare this phone to the iPhone 11, but I did it on purpose because the iPhone has optical image stabilization which makes the footage way smoother. This is something the other two phones lack, so the videos from Hatwaf and Humidity are noticeably shaky without any stabilization. But wait a second, some of you might say the Hatwaf Note 12 actually has electronic image stabilization. Well, yeah, that's true, but I decided to turn it off. Why? because it makes the video quality worse. This so-called stabilization drops the frame rate and looks absolutely choppy and awful. Check this out, that's rubbish, it's absolutely useless. So my advice is don't turn on the stabilization on Hotwaf, without it it's a bit shaky but it still looks okay. However, if you're on a budget the Hotwaf is still a reasonable choice for video recording. In my opinion the overall video quality is slightly better than the Humidity G3 Plus. The macro camera is pretty useless, just like most macro cameras on Android phones. The OnePlus Nord C3 Lite, which is three times the price of the Hotwaf Nord 12, also has a 2 megapixel macro camera that's pretty gross. Main camera is the star of the show. The front facing camera also takes fair photos on the enough light and it's used to facial recognition to unlock the phone. Overall the cameras on the Note 12 are fair for the price. If you're not a hardcore photographer, you'll be happy with the photos it takes. Just don't expect to take amazing photos in low light or with heavy digital zoom. The phone runs on the latest Android 13 which is pretty sweet. The user interface is super clean and simple with big icons and easy to use menus. You can also customize it a bit if you want. The phone is powered by an entry level Unisoc T606 processor which is pretty fast for a budget phone. It also has 8GB of RAM which is more than enough for most people. I can easily have a bunch of apps open at the same time without any lag. The phone has 128GB of internal storage which is plenty for most people, but if you need more you can expand it with a micro SD card up to 1TB. The phone has a dual SIM slot so you can choose to use two SIM cards or one SIM card and one SD memory card. If you're traveling a lot you might want to use dual SIM card so you can have a local SIM card and a SIM card from your home country. But if you're mostly using your phone at home, you might want to use one SIM card and one SD card for more storage. It's up to you how you want to use it. The Antutu score of the Note 12 is 163,000 points which is pretty good for its class. It's comparable to other devices in the same price range like Blackview A85, Dual Phone Note 16 Pro or Humidity G3 Plus. It's not the fastest phone on the market but it's definitely fast enough for most people. I tested the Note 12 with a few popular games including Asphalt 9 Legends, Call of Duty Mobile and PUBG. The Asphalt ran smoothly at medium graphics settings with no significant lag or frame drops. The game was playable and relatively smooth even with the default 30fps frame rate. The graphics were still impressive and the gameplay was fluid and responsive. I was able to drift around the corners and pull off stick jumps without any problems. Call of Duty Mobile also ran smoothly at low graphics settings, with no lag or frame drops. The frame rate was initially 60 FPS but it dropped slightly in busy moments, however this didn't affect the overall playability of the game. The graphics were still good and the gameplay was fast paced and exciting. I was able to take down enemies with ease. PUBG Mobile ran smoothly at minimum graphics settings. No visible lags or frame rate reductions. The frame rate was 30 FPS but it's still playable for most people. The graphics were still good but basic. Overall, Note 12 is a good phone for light gaming. It can handle most popular games without any issues, but you might need to lower the graphics settings for some more demanding games. If you're a serious gamer, you might want to consider a more powerful phone, but if you're into simple games like Candy Crush or Subway Surfers, the Note 12 will be more than enough. The phone also has a ton of connectivity features, so you can stay connected no matter where you are. 
It has fast 4G LTE data speeds and Wi-Fi 4 connectivity with support of 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands. The phone doesn't support 5G yet, but that's not a big deal since 5G is still in early stages of development. We also got here a Bluetooth 5.0 connectivity, GPS and the NFC for contactless payments. 6,180 mAh battery is so big it could probably power a small city for a day. But seriously, this thing will last for 2-3 to three days on a single charge, even if you're using it for heavy duty tasks like gaming or streaming videos. During charging the phone gets so hot it could probably fry an egg. The phone itself heats up to 115 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around 46 degrees Celsius, and the charger gets even hotter, reaching temperatures up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius. I guess that's why they call it Hotwaf. The Note 12 comes with a standard 18 watt charger which will fully charge the battery in about an hour. That's not the fastest fast charging on the market, but it's definitely not bad considering the size of the battery. The Hotwaf Note 12 is a budget phone that punches way above its weight. It's got a reliable processor, a long-lasting battery, a satisfactory camera system and 8GB of RAM. Sure, the camera on Note 12 isn't the best on the market, but it's good enough for most people. If you're not a hardcore photographer, you'll be happy with the photos it takes. And for the price, it's a steal. You can pick up a Note 12 for around $165 US on Amazon and around $99 US on AliExpress. That's a pretty good price for the phone with this kind of specs. And if you're interested in getting it, you can just scan the QR code that pops up on the screen right now to get straight to the Amazon store. Or if you're feeling adventurous, you can order it from AliExpress. Just be aware that it might take a few weeks to arrive from China. Okay guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that video and found it helpful. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing to Family Pop TV so you won't miss when the next video comes out. Thanks for watching.